TNTM The Show presents Talking Nerdy, February 2024 edition, with your hosts, Pablo Gunner and The Ambassador. And we are here to talk nerdy to you, Avatar, The Last Airbender, live action, mind you, okay? Yeah. So let's jump into Avatar, ASAP. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about Avatar. Uh, the first two or the first two or three episodes were freaking amazing. I feel like it took me a little bit to get into because they were done different, right? Like it was done different. They did a lot of exposition in that first episode real quick, but it worked and made sense for what they were doing. And it they did things a little bit more chronological instead of just having flashbacks to what happened beforehand just did it so they didn't have to keep having flashbacks right and now i don't know about you but i was watching this with the kids i was watching the animated version with the kids i didn't get through the whole thing with the kids but i definitely got everything that they covered how many episodes was it eight eight so it's eight episodes about an hour right yeah on netflix about three episodes of the cartoon for one episode. Okay. So 24 episodes versus 26. So there, there's enough room to cover it all if they really wanted to. Yeah, they summed it up. It, it reminded me not a lot or too much of One Piece, but I was like, okay, they're kind of doing the One Piece thing with this season. And uh, like you said, the, the, first, the first few episodes were really solid. Yeah, and honestly, I felt like they spent too much time in Omashu. The, there were some good moments for it, but it just felt like they were just kind of dragging their heels a little bit there. Uh, with the, you had the, well, because they, like I said, they, they did mash up a lot of stories. Yeah. That's what, they mashed up a lot of stories into that one, which is like the mole badger getting lost in the cave story. There was the whole uh, boomy, and, and there was, they had the cabbages. <gasps> They also did Jet and his Freedom yeah. Fighters, and then they also did the uh, the, the disabled kid and the mechanic kid, the yeah. dad, who's uh, making stuff for the Fire Nation. Yeah. yeah, they packed a lot in there. And then Boomy, the Boomy thing, I felt like was such a great touch because he said, "You were gone for a hundred years, and." You were just frozen in time. We had to live those hundred years. I had to decide, do I give food to my soldiers or do I give food to the starving children? He's like, I have to make those decisions on a consistent basis. You didn't. You're still a kid. You still have the joy. And now you're just getting back to it. And, and you need to learn how to make those choices. Right. There was a lot of that, which is like, sorry, kid, but you got to grow up quick. Yeah, I understand why they did so much there, but at the same time, I felt like some parts needed more attention that weren't given the proper attention. The Spirit Forest, I thought, was a pretty good pace, and it was cool to kind of introduce Roku early on. But I felt like the Northern uh, Water Tribe should have been more to it. I think what really weakened it quite a bit. Same mistake they made in the movie we don't talk about. If you have... Aang there, have them, especially if they're going to go the route they went, have them at least do some water bending before getting there. And it just, the movie, of course, the movie made, the M. Night Shyamalan made less sense because they showed him not being good at water bender, which isn't a fact. He picks it up pretty easily, water bending. That's probably the easiest of them, with probably the next easiest one for him, fire bending. He just had to realize what the purpose of fire bending was. Yeah, that, that one was pretty hard for him. Like, he, he, he got burned and burned some people a few times. But, yeah, no, I completely yeah. agree, because I was thinking that the whole time, which is, why isn't she teaching him any of that that which she is learning the entire time? And I feel like they did that in the cartoon, 
But they didn't do that in the movie, and I was like, why? We already saw it fail once, so why are you going to do it again? Yeah. Because the M. Night Shyamalan movie made that same mistake, and it wasn't good. Right, and then when he does water bend, you know, even though he's in the Avatar state, you're like, but he hasn't done anything really at this point. The other thing that kind of irritates me with this is, I don't think he's going to be a good waterbender after the end of this season, because I felt like they needed to do more time with Katara and the Northern Water Tribe. It almost turned into like a Ray moment where it's like, oh, she's the master. It's like, that's not how it works. She did work hard at it, but you don't just work that hard and just become a master. Right. Especially of one of the most complex bendings there is because uh besides earth bending like water bending, bending has the most sub genres of bending in it the only ones of course we see are the fighting and the healing but there's also blood bending as right, well which we haven't seen yet which we haven't seen uh, yet but what even ice though right like there's ice. the ice there's the just turning it into ice and using it that way and stuff which, but yeah, I, I, the uh, the one thing I did like that they did in this was was when they showed her like taking the earth bending style and adapting it with water bending. That's really cool. But there was one whole problem with the whole thing. We don't actually see her seeing that method done. We see it getting done when we're watching the show, but it's never with Katara. We really see it more with Aang or Zuku. We needed to see that with Katara because it just doesn't really add up very well if she's doing something that we haven't seen her see. I just felt like the show was strongest, like the visuals were mind-blowing, right? They were like, really good. The way that they made the elements look and everything like that, it made sense. Like, in the cartoon, earthbending doesn't really make sense. They made it make sense in this, which is the whole mass and matter thing, right? Like, yeah. you're taking Earth out of something. There's going to be a missing chunk of Earth there. It's not just going to be still flat ground, right? And so, in the cartoon, there was, it was, the Earth was always just normal wherever they took Earth from. And yet, and then, like, even Omashu, it was a tower in it that was hollow on the inside, right? Like, when it was falling, you're like, oh, that makes sense. That's why it looks the way it looks on the out. Okay, that... And, and the, even when they would do earthbending, there'd be a chunk of road missing or whatever. I love the part where there was that earthbender and he was talking to Uncle Iroh. And he was like, he was talking about how his brother was just burnt to a crisp. Dude, that made me tear up so much. So much, so much of this show made me tear up because you're seeing kids or at least young, very young adults going to war. But that's what we do in real life, right? Like, the people who we recruit into our militaries, these are people that are 17, 18, 19. They're in their young adult stage. They look, they're they still kids. I was in the Navy. I was not mature enough to be in the Navy. If I was to be in the Navy with the maturity that I have now, I would kick butt in the military because I'm just so focused but these are kids that are trying to preserve their future and everything like that. So I can understand, like, the freedom fighters, like, it's reality, though, because you see it all over the world, and it's sad, and it's scary, and it's terrifying, and you also go just see the way that things are in our own country. It hits me so hard. Like I said, there are so many parts in this that made it real, because when it's cartoons, it's cartoons, and it's different, right? And it's not real. But then when you use real actors and everything like that, you make it real, one of the weakness I I will say is I have heard like the some of the acting's not that great. I think maybe that was one of the weaknesses of Katara. Maybe there was more yeah. that they filmed with her, and because she's not that strong of an actor yet, or at least early on in the show, that that's why they cut those parts out. I'm assuming, right? But the other big thing they did that drove me crazy was that whole ending sequence where they have him get taken him submit himself to the ocean spirit the original concept was good was really good in its own and if they would have done the water bending throughout it even if they wanted to modify it and maybe have him and katara because they've been training together pull off the massive feet together that would have been cool instead of just the whole ocean spirit thing got boring to watch right because it's so much CGI without, like, really 
any type of involvement or effort since it's just a spirit. Right, no build up to it and stuff yeah. like that. And there wasn't and like like you said, he didn't have the training, anything. And then their failure to set up Iro well in that sequence wasn't very good too. Because you have Zhao saying, Okay, I want you here because you're an expert on spiritual things, yet we never see him do anything there that would tell us okay, he's familiar with this. And that's a problem. If you're asking someone to be there for that, it'd be like asking a lumberjack to show up, but then every time you need a tree cut down, he's gone. Right. It's like, well, they they didn't do a good job of that in the show either, which is they're like, oh, he's had these dealings, and then they never explained it or showed it, and I was like, they, they didn't do that well in the show either. But that's what's... That's the thing about retrospect, right? It's like, okay, let's improve. And there were things that were improved. I feel like for the most part, certain things, they were improved. They did make sense. Like I said, they did sum up a lot in a short amount of episodes. I feel like most of the acting was really top-notch. I feel like Azula was maybe one of my favorite things because she wasn't just this random evil child. She was this child that's being manipulated and toyed with and kind of driven to madness of like her dad's just she the, she the dad's pitting the kids against each other and i've heard people do that in real life and it's messed up to do that right yeah it's it's it's, it's maniacal you see why she goes down that path and and that's this made it make sense the other one was just like she's just a mean evil horrible girl which can you know be like all right there's people that are kind of like that in real life sure yeah uh, but this made it better, right? Like, this enriched it. Overall, I was really impressed. For like, I feel like most of the acting was pretty solid. I feel like there were some parts where you could tell the actors are not good enough that they were real tears, especially early on in the show. I, it's crazy, too, because the way that they film stuff, they film it out of order a lot of the times, so you don't... It's like they may, they may be here... At, and that's really weird and confusing to me to be like, how do you get to that emotional point when you're not doing that? That's acting, right? Yeah. So, but the visuals were top notch. Uh, I feel like a lot of the a lot of the stuff was done pretty well for the most part. Uh, Abed was still Abed to me. I don't feel like he really knocked it out of the park as the mechanic. I liked yeah. Soka. I, I a lot of the characters I really enjoyed. Uh, for the most part, yeah, Katara, I feel like, was a little lackluster. I think maybe she's not a very experienced actress. I hope she gets better as it goes on so that we can see more of her because, like I said, I feel like they probably cut some of her stuff out or maybe a lot of her stuff out. I don't know. But yeah. overall, like, I'm down for more. I don't know about you. Yeah. I think it's... I don't know if it's a... I don't know if it's a must-see. For me, I loved it. So for me, it's a must-see, but... I feel like most people who are fans of the show, they're not going to think it's a must-see because it's not true enough to what they love. But I think it might have enough of what they love that it's definitely worth checking out. And so for most people that are just going in kind of blind, I think that it might be a must-see for them. Yeah, I, I think it's worth watching, but some of the liberties that were taken, I just feel like kind of took uh, moments away because, uh, like, especially, like, the end with the whole Northern Water Tribe, there was no reason to take Aang's moment away from him. He, he need, I mean, it's good to have those moments there for the main character. And then Katara has her moment, but it doesn't feel as justified because they, they're just like, you're a master. Well, I don't, I don't recall them just saying that she is a master. The Avatar still has to learn waterbending. In that case, he couldn't have asked for a better master. Uh, but I do know one of the kids are like, oh, they called her that. And I was like... No, the, the teacher. The teacher actually called, uh, her, called that? her a master. Well, I mean, like, they did in the show, but they didn't show well, her... In the show, she also she also was teaching Aang, the but then mm -hmm. got there. She actually took, did the healing like they did and then moved into that class. Right. And was actually participate like the fact that she never really participated in the class. Well, she did it, and I I think she learned right away naturally, and then she was like, I figured it out, whatever. And it was it was quick. It was quick. 
Like, it would have been better to have her in the class for a little bit. Because just calling someone a master that quickly... But that's that's the difference between show and movie. In I mean, I know it's a show, but it felt like a long movie, right? Like, it's it's a movie broken into eight parts, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, I think I think their main issue is they didn't spend enough time to be able to develop the characters in that area, and then of course, and then they removed Iroh's moment there too, at the Northern Water Tribe, where he just genuinely like, in the cartoon, it was a little bit better because. Even the last Airbender movie we don't talk about did that seem pretty good. That was one of the few scenes that's worth watching there where Iroh basically steps up and you actually see he does have, he is familiar with things spiritually. Where he's like, okay, Moon Spirit gave you part of their essence so that you could give it back if it needed to. It's the, because it was weird having her just kind of do it on her own, just out of blue. It it made more sense when Iroh was there to be able to suggest it. Instead, they kind of just got him out of that area and then have her figure it out herself. Right, right. So, but what grade would you overall give it? I It's a solid watch, but I wouldn't call it a must watch. Okay. All right, cool. Then, I want to talk about our merch. <gasps> for this two cabbages please which is avatar focused i have the airbender one because i've always feel like i have connected with airbenders i've been told that like oh hey you're a cool chill mellow go with the flow kind of dude which is also kind of water but not exactly so and i'd totally rock some head tattoos and just like live in a temple you know and ride mm -hmm. a uh, a bison but yeah so i love this uh, it's actually Slay J designed this superb, and there's different versions. There's you can do white lettering or black lettering. This is the tank top version, and we have all kinds of different versions. There's ones with with like the, all the symbols on the sleeve. There's so it's there's top notch stuff, and it's so great. And I was I'm so impressed with the designs that Slay J came up with. It he really killed it, and uh, so definitely check it out because it's on sale now. For this month, which we don't have much for for the month of February, so I don't know if we should keep it going. I feel I, like well, maybe we should keep it going. I think we should extend it to the you next know? month the because it's, it's such a big deal. Like it's so good. I need more people need to see this show. Yeah, and and even if you're not into the live action, you should still get it. Because pick whichever one because I know everybody has their different versions of which they are like yours. But yeah, Fire Nation. How can you go wrong with? Fire Nation, the breath of life. <laughs> you can't argue with the breath of life. Because that's, uh, if you watch the cartoon, when they go find the origins of firebending, because the Fire Nation has corrupted their way of doing firebending, so they don't actually use the true uh, origin of it. They use anger. Mm -hmm. And, well, they're very angry people, so it's effective. <laughs> but... Iroh doesn't use anger. He uses the real purpose of it, and that's why he's so powerful. Oh, he's so great. I love. Oh, I loved his parts in the show, like when he used yeah. his, his fire bending. I was like, oh my god! Or, this or is the awesome. fact he developed like the whole blue lightning deflect deflection thing. He's like, oh, yeah, I learned this. I've seen waterbenders do this similarly, but I applied it to fire bending. You just go like this, and then you just let it flow through and go out. Yeah. Yeah, crazy, dude. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, my wife is definitely a firebender. I feel like I need to get her a firebender shirt because she is fire and fury, and she definitely uses her fire for, not always, not always for for anger and hate, but I feel like uh, maybe in aggression, but most of the time, sometimes it's for love, you know, of the, of the children and the things she cares about, but yeah. And then I know that Slay J got... Did he get earth or no? He got water because he's like, he's all about the the blood bending. He's 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 like, yeah, I'm a blood bender. Like that's what he is. Maybe it should be like tainted with some red or something, you know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I so. mean, you know, subgenres. The blood bending's cool, but I mean, what about lava bending? Yeah, and, lava, uh, lava metal bending, bending is sick. Yeah, metal is 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 metal. Yeah, it's it's hardcore for sure. 
I, I do. I love the ice. Like, that's so cool. Like, the ice. Because I'm like... Especially, like, they use, like... And they can just freeze people in place and stuff. And, like, she uses, like, ice blades. Oh, my gosh. Katara does. Like, there's so much stuff that's just, like, so cool about... Uh, water bending, and then, but I kind of feel like I, I've told my wife though, like I do. Maybe she is more Earth, but I don't because Earth is really cool too. And like I said, Earth was done so much better. I feel like in the this live action show than even I think the the animated because they made it make sense. They they improved it. They made it better. We'll, we'll see. Depends on how so, tough is. Yeah, we will see. We will see Toph. Because some of the characters, I'm like, I would not have gone with that person as, like, that person. But whatever. Like, some of them are better and some of them are not. Like, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, Zuko makes feelings. So, I, I like Zuko. He's pretty good. But, yeah, Sokka's, like, perfect. Um, yeah. I feel like a lot of them are, like, Aang, perfect. Iroh, perfect. Like, there's some where just, like, could not be more perfect. You're, like, crazy. So, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so that's, so make sure you check it out because it's on sale with free shipping. The, our merch of the month is, and anything that says talk nerdy to me on it, that stuff is the cheapest. That stuff's usually like 15 bucks and full price is like 30 bucks. But yeah, we have, we have really great sales, uh, for our merch of the month stuff. So definitely check all that stuff out because we have Halo stuff on there as well for this month. Pretty much anything that you could check out this month that's related it's going to be on there. It's expect that. We're making merch for it. If it's nerdy, we're making merch for it. And that's what you have to expect for this month and for the February. And for any month, even for March, right? So, but speaking of people, we're doing it for you. Do it. They're, they do stuff for us. We work together. Are the people that we have been uh, networking with. So I, I have to give a shout out with them. Always at the top of that list has to be Atticus because he's the king. You know, he's the, what is the Batman of, La, La, um, like how, I, I want to say, I'm probably saying it wrong. Definitely check out his stuff on YouTube. That's his main focus. That's what he focuses on. He's very interactive. He's very raw. He's re shows you what life is like in Vietnam, in a small town and everything. He he goes to big towns too. Like, yeah. so you see it all and it's, it's real legit stuff. And there's also, if you want to be an English teacher out there. He gives you yeah, some tips and, and stuff like that. One of his last videos was like, this is how I do laundry out here. Yeah. So, like, just simple stuff to, like, it's it's great stuff. I, I love his stuff. It's so good. Also, networkers, or Berna Kenshin, she has great stuff on YouTube. Really, all of her content is, is gold. She does cosplay. She's hardcore, Splatooner, and anime uh, aficionado. I feel like I can say phenomenal stuff on there. Definitely check her out. Uh, the Superpower list, check them out across the board, where it's Facebook, Twitter, wherever they're at, check them out. They're really cool. I love the stuff that they post. They're pretty hardcore, deep into comics, nerds, for sure. And then we have Riot TV's really cool. Check them out. They're, they're one of ours. Uh, Randy, uh, S0725 on, on the tweets. Uh, they're really cool. Actually, that's the same guy that does a superpower list. So, yeah, that's theirs. Uh, Amerimay Media, they're super cool. They're really awesome. Check all their stuff out, too. Uh, Web Imagine Service does music. The Film Rage guys are so good. If, you, if you're hardcore into movies, they cover every single movie out there. Like, they rage about it because they, they, they're doing it for the people because they watch all the bad, everything. They'll watch it, whether it's good or bad. They watch it. They go through the pain like we're going through the pain of Halo. You know, they do it for the people. So, yeah. and it's funny stuff. They're funny and they're cool. The MK Jekyll and Hyde, they do like a web comic and stuff, but they have great content across the board on all their social media. So definitely check them out. And then Filmmakers Pod, Cinematic, Anarchy, Pesky Gremlins, uh, Gmart 8, Billy D's, Poe Boy Pod, and Gone Cold Podcast. Those are also some other ones that are great to check out. So, yeah, check them out because they're awesome. And uh, I think uh, I think that's it for this week. Or for this month, actually, for this yeah. month. So check out our stuff for for March, our, our merch and all our content. Like I said, we're going to be try to cover as much of the nerdy stuff as possible. So Yeah, and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos. Uh, they're worth watching and a blast. So stay nerdy, planet Earth.
and talk nerdy to me.